Hello guys, do you follow me on Twitter or anyone from Laravel community on Twitter? And yes, by the way, I still call it Twitter and will call it Twitter, not X. And Twitter is one of the best ways to get Laravel tips, tricks, news, opinion, and stuff like that. And even if you do follow me on Twitter, you probably don't see all of my tweets, which I do tweet a lot, around 10 tweets a day about Laravel, but not necessarily. And in this video, I want to kind of recap the most popular Laravel tips from my Twitter and someone else's Twitter as well that got the most engagement, like the most likes or comments and generally was popular on various topics in Laravel. After this video in the comments below, tell me if you like that format. If you do, then I will continue that probably bi-weekly or once a month because new tips are getting published almost every day on Twitter. So, in kind of a rapid fire way, let's go. 15 or so Laravel tips in no particular order. Tip number one, did you know that you can run PHP Artisan Migrate with dash dash pretend and it would show the SQL queries that would be executed without actually executing them yet. So it's kind of like a rehearsal, a dry run of your upcoming migrations. Tip number one. Tip number two comes from Ash Allen and it's his example of what best architecture tests he uses in his application. So to check that he didn't leave any DD and dumps in the code, check to use strict types, check commands to have handle methods. And these are just a few examples of architectural tests. If you want to find out more of them, just read the PEST documentation. So this is tip number two. Or by the way, if you have questions on any of those tips, just shoot in the comments below and we can discuss together and maybe I will shoot a follow-up on one of those topics. So PEST architectural tests, tip number two. Tip number three from myself. Did you know that you can create Blade error pages with specifically HTTP status code and they will automatically be shown whenever that error happens? For example, a Blade file resources views errors 500.blade.php and then if I abort with 500, that error would automatically appear. So you can create such a page for all of your status codes or some particular ones like 403.blade.php and others. Tip number four also from myself is about Blade. So instead of doing if auth user or if auth check, you can do the same thing with Blade directives like auth and the opposite of that is guest. And this is one of those examples which strike me personally that those tweets that come almost directly from Laravel documentations pages get a lot of likes and retweets because a lot of people don't know them. So personally, it's almost painful to spend a day or two on some demo for more complicated subject and then get like 10 likes and then the next day just post some screenshot from the docs and get 200 likes. But that's, I guess, how social media works. Anyway, that was tip number four. Tip number five, even more classical ones, but many people still don't know about four L's blade directive, which makes the code shorter. So I will zoom out. So instead of having if and then else for empty, you can use for else and empty with the same result. Tip number six, also about blade with five HTML attributes for conditions, the ones that you can see on the screen. And this is even more striking example of just putting two screenshots literally from the docs. I didn't invent anything. I just grouped them together in a tweet with a link to the official docs and 200 likes. Amazing. But I will zoom them in. So basically in your button, for example, you can add at disabled with a condition and condition may depend on whatever in your project. So it returns true or false. And then that HTML input or HTML element becomes disabled based on true or false result. Similarly, read only true or false, required true or false, also selected and checked for checkboxes and select drop downs. So that's tip number six. Tip number seven comes from Newton job. And again, another example of shorter code in Laravel using helpers. Here it is zoomed in. So you can do if statement and abort if something goes wrong, but also you can do gate allow if or even shorter gate authorize with the gate ability name. 
This is tip number seven. Tip number eight from Laravel Backpack kind of official Twitter handle. I use it quite a lot. In .env file, I change mail driver to log and then whatever I send the email to test the application, the email text with the code in both HTML and plain text can be found in this file, storage logs, Laravel log. So the email isn't actually sent, so I don't need any driver like Mailgun or others. I just check the email text in Laravel log. Tip number nine comes from Anikat Magadum, and this is about validation rules and the order of those rules. Keep in mind that some of the validation rules trigger SQL queries to the database. For example, unique users would actually need to check if the user is unique, so would launch SQL query. And then if that query passes, but max validation fails, it means that you launched one too many queries to the database. So the advice and the tip here is to order the validation rules, so anything triggering the database would come at the end. A great tip in my opinion. Tip number 10 comes from myself. Five tips to go. There will be 14 in total in this video. If you have a blade view that you need to attach to a route, you don't need to create a controller if you don't have any variables. So instead of doing something like this, you can just do route view. So provide the URL and provide the blade file name. So resources views home blade in this case. You can also assign route name if you wish, but you don't have to create a controller. Tip number 11 comes from Osama Mater, and it's about cloning the queries. For example, if you need to have kind of a base query repeated a few times with a different conditions, with slightly different conditions, you may do something like this. I will zoom that in. So you create kind of the base query in the variable query, but then you get one set of the results with one set of conditions and then another set with another condition. And the main thing here is to clone the initial query. So you can use the same base query multiple times in your other places in the code. Tip number 12 from myself and we're back to the topic of routing. If you have multiple resource controllers, you can group them together. So there's route resource, but there's also route resources, plural, which is just a personal preference. I don't remember using it that much, but sometimes it's beneficial, it's cool, and it's good to know the possibility of Laravel syntax options. Tip number 13 comes from ChatGPT. Recently, I had a scenario where I needed to remember the opposite rule of required. And I thought, what was the rule name? Was it nullable? Was it optional? Was it something else? And I asked ChatGPT in Laravel validation rules, what is the opposite rule of required? By the way, I don't remember which version was it. Was it 4, the newest one, or 3.5? But I'm using free ChatGPT version. And what impressed me is that it gave back kind of a tutorial, not just the answer of nullable, but also examples. So required with string, but then also nullable with string, which means that you can provide, for example, max 500 symbols rule, but that would be triggered only if the value is present because the value is actually nullable. But if it does come through, then the max rule would be automatically triggered. So that's the first part of the tutorial. And the second part is actually combining with other rules. And also ChatGPT mentioned an alternative sometimes validation rule, which also can be used in some cases. And finally, tip number 14 comes from myself. And again, about routing, did you know that you can do not only route group and not only route resource, but also group the same controller methods if they are not in a resource way. So there's no index store, delete, update, destroy, and stuff like that. You can do a route controller group, and then you don't need to repeat the controller name every time. You just do the URL and the method, URL and method. So the code becomes shorter. And again, the step kind of is from documentation, but 250 likes on Twitter. Go figure. But that was actually the reason for shooting this video. So I thought if so many likes on Twitter, probably people on YouTube would also appreciate such quick tips. What do you think? Do you have any comments on any of those tips or on general format of this video? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.